Are you tired of watching boring old press releases? Then you've come to the right place, the right channel, the number one channel for CEO interviews and company overviews. Welcome to Rich TV Live. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the like button on our videos to help with the YouTube algorithm. For more information and in-depth discussions and analysis, join our trading club at richpigsdaily.com. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to get alerted when our next CEO interview is released so you can discover the next 10 bagger. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, and we have a Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Ben Samaru, the CEO of Wonderfy Technologies. How are you doing today, Ben? Hey, Rich, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm very excited about learning more about Wonderfy. I have a few questions for you to get started. First of all, Wonderfy is a company aiming to build a seamless, secure, and simplified platform for educating and allowing access to decentralized finance, DeFi, love DeFi. Can you tell us more about the company and the primary goal? Of course. So our mission with Wonderfy is to bring decentralized finance to the masses. The problem with DeFi right now is it's extremely fragmented, very complicated. There is a super steep learning curve and a ton of obstacles for anyone that wants to get involved in DeFi. You may have seen this if you've played around. I'm, I'm sure you've, uh, you've encountered that. And so our platform will be a gateway to this new financial system. And really, our goal is to level the playing field. So you can think of us like a trusted gateway to the new financial system. So the platform really allows users to access all the best parts of DeFi. It's so simple that someone with no crypto experience can use it. So you can buy assets, earn interest, track your performance without any of the complexity. Uh, I think a good comparison, uh, which I always like to use, I know it's very overused, but um, when Netscape Navigator was released, it gave consumers an easy access point for the internet, which at that time was not usable for your average consumer. It was uh, just not at that stage yet. So that was the first front end that really opened things up to um, to your everyday person. And so uh, what we think is that we're the this you know really the same stage with DeFi, where existing tools are really built for crypto traders or experts, and there really is yet to be a platform that provides that dead simple user interface. And so our platform it's really addressing the biggest problem in DeFi today, which is accessibility and you know, our thesis with Wonderfy is that the informed consumer is going to want to increasingly own and control their assets directly rather than having a centralized entity own them. And so that comes back to, you know, our core focus, which is really enabling and empowering individuals to do this. And it's, it's really a big social movement behind this. Absolutely. And we love cryptocurrencies. We love decentralized finance. Can you give us a better understanding of the DeFi basics and how you got involved in the space? Yeah, of course. So, you know, the movement here, it's really around fair and democratized access to finance. That's DeFi. And so, you know, in the, in the traditional financial system, you have issues with censorship, high transaction fees, legacy infrastructure, and almost 2 billion people in the world that are unbanked for various reasons. Another major issue is access to investment opportunities. You and I have access to all kinds of different, uh, you know, investment opportunities, Rich. And, uh, you know, but, but the fact of the matter is there's many, many, many people um, who are excluded from investing in a number of different financial markets. And so this creates, uh, really, DeFi creates the potential to decrease this wealth inequality, which is, um, which is a, you know, has, has major potential there. And so... I think if you if you want to you know summarize uh, DeFi for somebody that doesn't have background in, in DeFi or crypto, it's really a new financial system that presents a faster, cheaper, and easier way to do finance. So I think it's it's really easy to get caught in the technical jargon when you talk about crypto and DeFi, and it's much better to focus on the value that it has to offer. A couple of examples. It allows you to borrow money instantly without having to be onboarded or approved by a bank. Wow. And 
And, you know, another one is you can earn interest in the range of say, you know, three to 7% on your assets instead of close to 0% that you're used to earning in your bank account at, you know, BMO or, or CIBC, uh, not to single anyone out, but at, you know, at any financial institution. And so with DeFi, you can lend, borrow, earn interest, trade assets, all through smart contracts, which are more efficient than traditional financial products and don't require you to rely on a bank. So you, you know, you have that control and, you know, really what we're, you know, the stage that we're at here, we're on the verge of a major disruption to finance, which is the biggest industry in the world. And it still uses technology that was built decades ago. And, and it's, it's really, you know, DeFi at the heart of that disruption. And, you know, the potential is, um, that it's going to democratize and really transform finance for the future. I love it. I love everything you're saying. And you touched on it a little bit. How will the DeFi platform benefit those looking to gain a stake in the crypto market? Yeah, so I think it's it's important to, to mention that we're in the very early stages of DeFi. I can't emphasize that enough. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, this is probably Bitcoin in like, 2014 or something like that. Nowhere, nowhere near, you know, kind of mass adoption. And so, like I said before, the space is really fragmented. It's really complicated. Um, a lot of obstacles for someone that wants to get involved. And so um, just like with any early technology, it's, you know, a lot of engineers in the space and they're building tools that are for people with that type of uh, knowledge and experience. And so that's really preventing wider adoption of DeFi. There's no trusted platform that makes it easy for people to use. And, you know, the existing platforms are really catering towards power users. And so as the functionality in the ecosystem grows, platforms are incorporating more and more different products and protocols, and you're getting further and further away from something that's actually suitable for your average consumer. So it, it looks great to people that um, are knee deep in crypto and DeFi, but uh, you know, the moment that somebody logs onto, um, a, you know, a DeFi platform that doesn't have any background, you know, they get lost in a matter of, of seconds. And so what our focus is, is really providing this trusted and easy way for people that have no background or experience to play in the new system. And, um, and I think it's, it's really, you know, again, comes back to our thesis around uh, the consumer really wanting to uh, own and control their own assets and, you know, have that, um, you know, direct ownership rather than trusting um, sort of an intermediary within it. And so with Wonderfy, our really our key opportunity is to harness all of the great, um, you know, protocols, assets and opportunities that are being created in the DeFi space and put them all within a simple access point that aligns with the mission of democratized, compliant and sustainable access to, to DeFi. I love it. DeFi is everywhere now. It seems like over the last six months, it's become mainstream for people that are in the crypto space. You keep hearing it. I keep hearing it. I keep interviewing companies that are getting into it. So let's talk about that. There's going to be some competition in the space. What sets you guys apart from your competitors in the DeFi space? So from a product perspective, it really comes down to user experience. And so since we are so early in DeFi, as I mentioned, you know, a lot of the existing tools really are catering towards that early adopter segment. So it's power users, it's people with a lot of experience. Um, and so you're not really seeing something that is uh, looking at tapping or accessing um, the early majority segment. And so what we're doing is we're really taking a different approach. And um, I think it's, we, we've just come to accept that all the, you know, all or the vast majority of users in DeFi are early adopters right now. And they have a, like completely different needs than your early majority segment, um, which again is what we're targeting. And so our view is that our, our, the platform, which, you know, if executed properly, it really opens up the technology to a much larger audience uh, than is currently serviced even though you're seeing these amazing numbers of growth within DeFi, it's really just this small, small segment of people that are using it. And that really goes against the core principles of democratized finance. It's the, 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 the foundations behind this are 
you know, uh, moving away from a centralized system where there's inequality in terms of, you know, income, access to opportunities, um, uh, access to services. And we have this incredibly powerful technology, but because of how, because of the stage that we're at with it, it's, it's just creating that inequality in a different way where you have to be an engineer or, you know, have the time and expertise really to, to under, understand uh, the ins and outs of, of what's happening. So I think it's, uh, you know, we're really, you know, laser focused on that um, opportunity. And I think our, you know, our alignment with some of our, you know, partners, strategic investors um, really helps us to, you know, access that, um, you know, early majority segment and, and kind of help to help to bring DeFi to the masses. And so that's, that's on the product side. I'll, I'll touch a just a little bit on the uh, public company side as well. And so there are a couple of companies in the DeFi space that are publicly traded and, um, you know, and, and that we, you know, uh, we, we, we know well and then look favorably upon. They're just in comparison to one or five, they're structured more like holding companies. So they'll hold DeFi assets um, or minority investments in um, uh, companies in the space. Um, and so, you know, rather than an operating business. And so with Wonderfy, we really are, you know, uh, we're building a trusted brand. We're focusing on our mission of creating better access to DeFi. And, um, and that really starts with our platform as the first tool to accomplish that. And, um, and you know, there's, there's much more kind of in the, in the roadmap. So what are the barriers to DeFi and what's Wonderfy doing and what is Wonderfy's strategy to overcoming those barriers? Sure. So I'll focus on one barrier. And I think, again, just giving a bit of a lens on where we're at, um, you know, the, the DeFi market, it's, you know, around $60 billion, very early stages. Um, like I said, I think, you know, if we, if we look back to Bitcoin at a few hundred dollars, that's sort of, you know, where, where we, we guess that it's at right now. But there is real traction and there's real value in the space. The use cases are real. You can send money globally. You can earn yield on your assets, lend and borrow, all in a decentralized, uh, permissionless way. And so, one of the challenges that you'll always see in, you know, in in, in new industries and uh, particularly in in crypto is um, challenges around um, getting talent. And and so, what we're seeing is as Bitcoin's getting more mainstream adoption, there have been more and more talented developers moving into moving into the space and. Um, you know, they're working on big problems like scalability. Um, and so, you know, we're going to continue to see more useful applications within DeFi as more talent comes in and the value proposition continues to grow. Um, and so, you know, with, with, with our team, we have, uh, you know, two of our co-founders are, um, you know, excellent engineers and our, our CTO Kong, he, you know, he has a, he, he's really an engineer and a mentor for a lot of uh, really talented people kind of across Canada. And so we're fortunate in the sense that, um, you know, wherever Kong goes, there's a following of uh, amazing engineers. And so we've been able to attract talent from, you know, Amazon, PayPal, Shopify, um, which, which, which really is, um, really is essential at this stage when we're, we're, we're in the ver very early days and um, you really need those, uh, you know, talented, um, really bright minds to help solve the big problems like um, like accessibility and DeFi, which is what we're working on. I think you guys are doing great. And you guys have garnered some incredible strategic investors and lots of interest. Can you tell us about your strategic investors and how they got involved? Some big names. Absolutely. So I can start with Kevin O'Leary. So Kevin, we got introduced to through one of our investors, Argo Blockchain. They're, you know, one of the biggest Bitcoin mining companies um, listed on the London Stock Exchange. And so um, we, you know, we, we got a kind of, you know, connection to, uh, to Kevin. And through our conversation, we really quickly realized that there was a lot of alignment there. Um, he had, a, you know, he had a shared view. It's like, you know, DeFi is the next big thing. Um, he's really into sustainability. Um, and so there, there are, you know, really key aspects to sustainability within, um, within the core tenants of DeFi. 
And, uh, and so we just aligned and saw that this is, you know, this is the biggest area of focus in finance over the next five or 10 years. And his, his business acumen and background really is such a good fit for, for what we're doing. I think um, he brings um, a lot of perspective from the traditional financial world. You know, he's a bond guy, which he, he always talks about and, and is, is, is well known for. And there's a lot of parallels that can be drawn uh, from, from that world into, into some of the, the most useful applications within DeFi at this time. And, you know, Kevin, he brings, um, you know, at first I was thinking, oh, this is great. There's a lot of, you know, PR that comes with Kevin O'Leary, but I mean, really it's, um, it's much, much more than that. I think, uh, there's a lot of relationships and connections that, you know, the moment you get Kevin O'Leary involved, you know, he's, he's all over, you know, getting you, you know, introduced to people that have uh, a shared vision of, and, and, and um, you know, complementary missions to what you're doing. And so Kevin, one of the first people Kevin introduced uh, us to was Josh Richards, wow. who, yeah. So, you know, Josh, you, you know who Josh is. Oh, not yeah. everybody, Absolutely. you know, n- not everybody does, uh, um, not yet at least, but I think um, he's, you know, Forbes calls him a business mogul, which I think is um, pretty <laughs> appropriate. And uh, the other nickname that's being thrown around is Mr. Wonderful Jr., which I think uh, Josh wow. is a fan of. And so he's- That's impressive. You know, for a 19 yeah. year old kid. Wow. For a 19 year old kid. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, you're, you're familiar with him. He's, you know, he runs an investment fund. He's got a production company with Mark Wahlberg. He's obviously um, got this, uh, you know, incredible TikTok following. He's got a, uh, a deal with the NHL where he's helping them repackage and repurpose their content for Gen Z. And so he's just got, he's got an incredible, um, lens and sort of breadth. And, you know, he's always surprising people with, with what he does, but what got us super excited was, you know, my, my first conversation with conversation with Josh was, um, around financial education. So he told me he didn't get any personal finance education in high school, which, you know, in a lot of places you don't. And I know there are some places in Canada now where that's starting, but he, his experience was, I didn't learn anything. There's a huge gap there. And so, what he sees as his duty and part of his mission is really helping to educate and empower his generation to take their personal finances into their own hands and look at money differently. And so, you know, crypto and DeFi is a part of that. And really he's chosen WonderFi as a vehicle to, um, to do that with his incredibly powerful voice. He has 40 million followers across his social platforms. And I think the, the big, the big takeaway for, 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 for the team uh, at WonderFi really is that this validates that this is an intergenerational movement. It's boomers, millennials, Gen Z, and they're all looking to get involved in whatever way they can to uh, fulfill this mission of democratizing finance, which is, which is really exciting. And then there's one more person I, I, I want to mention who's um, gotten involved with us recently. And if you know for for those in the in the crypto world uh this will be a very familiar name sam bankman freed who's the founder and ceo of ftx which is one of the top three crypto exchanges in the in the world right next to binance and and coinbase and so sam is um you know so sam's built the most technologically advanced exchange in two years and they just um you know, they just closed a massive financing. They're, they're valued at almost $20 billion. Wow. Incredible, incredible technology. He's really, uh, you know, they're really innovating. They're really not only on the technology side, but now they're pushing the envelope and bringing crypto to the main, to mainstream really. So they're, you know, they're, you know, official sponsor of the MLB, like Tom Brady is the spokesperson for them. They're, you know, they've renamed the, Miami Heat uh, Arena, the I think it was the American Airlines Arena. It's now the FTX Arena, and so they're just you know laying their stamp everywhere, really, to help bring crypto to the masses. And uh, and so Sam is a you know an extremely uh, unique, uh, incredibly. Uh, I mean, to, for me to say he's incredibly bright is like you know such a uh, it would just fall short. Like I think, in my opinion, it's not going to be long before he's right up there on the Forbes list next to Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Wow. Like that's, that's his, you know, 
that's uh, that's sort of the the path that, that he's on in my personal view. Um, and so, anyways, um, we we have a shared vision really with Sam and, and with FTX, which is again creating better access to decentralized finance. And so we have several things in the works with them, which will help us carry out that mission. So we're you know we're really excited about you know Kevin, Josh, uh, Sam, and and uh, you know all, all these individuals who. Um, are, are kind of, you know, supporting and, and behind our, um, our mission at Wonderfy. Very, very, very impressive team of strategic investors and advisors. Now, in addition to that, Wonderfy has built a very impressive leadership team. Can you tell us a little bit about your key members? I know you've touched base a little bit on it and the experience they bring to the team. Of course. So, yeah, I talked about Kong a little bit, who's, uh, who's our CTO and another one of our co-founders is Kardec, who's also, you know, an incredibly talented engineer. Uh, I worked with uh, Kong and Kardec uh, going back to 2017. We were part of the First Point Capital team, which um, we built in 2017. Um, it was acquired by Galaxy Digital in 2018. And so we oh. were part of uh, Galaxy's public listing, which was one of the first companies in the world to go public with crypto on its balance sheet. So it was a really important milestone for the industry. Um, you know, we've all been involved in the space for a long time. Um, my, in a previous life, I was a securities lawyer and, and now I sit on the Securities Commission um, FinTech Advisory Committee and on the FinTrack Virtual Currencies Committee. So I have a really good lens on uh, the regulatory environment, which is always important when you're dealing with crypto. And um, my co-founder, Dean, he's founded and advised a number of different crypto companies you know, going back five years, five or six years, uh, Argo Blockchain, uh, who I mentioned earlier, is is one of those, and uh, and so you know we've got a really well rounded leadership team with a lot of um, you know experience in this space, and um, and yeah, and that's helped us attract um, some amazing talent on our team, um, and you know a great uh, board of directors as well. So you know Sean Clark, who's um, somebody I've worked with closely over the last few years. He was the co-founder and CEO of HUD8, uh, which is now listed on the NASDAQ. They just uh, recently completed that uplisting. Yes. He's um, you know, one, of our, uh, one of our directors. And, and then also Mark Bins, who um, is the CEO of Big Digital, you know, one of the you know, leading uh, publicly traded uh, crypto companies. So we're really, we've got a really great sort of um, support team around us, uh, you know, whether it's you know, board advisors or our, kind of our core team. That's great. Sounds like a star-studded team from top to bottom. Very impressive. And what should investors keep an eye on from WonderFi in the coming months? So our focus right now is the platform. And that's because it you know, really addresses this accessibility problem, which is, in our view, the biggest issue in the space. And so we're planning to launch the platform in Q3 this year. And great. We're, like our, our, yeah, our, our focus really is it's constantly improving the experience for our users and for newcomers to the space. And it's, it's a, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of labor in that process, but it's, it's really, it's really an important one and we really believe in it. Um, and so, you know, our platform, it provides access and, you know, opens up DeFi to the masses, helps us really establish the WonderFi brand. Um, and it becomes a springboard for a lot more. So our, our plans in the future really extend far beyond the platform. Um, I think there, you know, the future is really collaboration between DeFi uh, companies and platforms like WonderFi and uh, traditional financial institutions, um, you know, other licensed entities. And um, I think we're going to see, like, we're already seeing a lot of interest and engagement from these types of institutions who are keenly interested in DeFi. And, you know, our team, our leadership team has been a part of, you know, educating incumbents, um, you know, regulators, uh, insurance companies, underwriters, like you name it on crypto, uh, you know, going back to the very early days. And so we're seeing the same types of needs here where it's just um, getting people up to speed and then finding ways that, um, you know, we can help to, you know, grow the technology through collaboration. So we're, you know, from a strategic standpoint, that's how we're kind of looking at the future. And, um, and then at the same time, we're, you know, we're in the process of our go public transaction. And so the, the company WonderFi is expected to list on the NEO uh, later this year. So we're really excited about that. And we're very excited about that. I'm very excited about that. And our community is literally all over the world. And I know that they're going to want to know where to find more about WonderFi. So where should they go? 
Sure. So the best starting point is our website. Um, so that's wonder.fi, wonder.fi. And so you can sign up for updates on our platform um, and, you know, also investor updates and, and sort of, you know, more on the corporate side. So we're, we're in the process of launching a refresh website, which is also going to have a learning center, which is going to be a great touch point for those that are interested in DeFi, you know, regardless of knowledge level. Um, and, and then, um, yeah. And then when we list on the NEO, our, our ticker will be uh, Wonder, W-N-D-R, which, uh, which we're really happy we're able to get that. I think it's a good fit. I think so too. W-N-D-R, guys, is the symbol when it comes out, hopefully soon. Thank you for joining us the CEO of Wonderfy Technologies, Ben Samaru. Thank you for joining us today, Ben. Thank you, Rich. Always a pleasure. And for those of you that are watching, please put this on your radar, put on your watch list. It's coming soon. And remember that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I love DeFi. I love new technology. I love the crypto space. I love fintech. I love technology. I love banking. And this is putting it all into one. So I think this is something that everyone needs to take very seriously. I believe this is an industry that is very undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed, and just getting started. And I think the future is very bright. Thank you for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a nice day. And thanks for joining us, Ben. Thanks. Thank you.